When it comes to the height of hypocrisy, look no further than Mitch McConnell. When it comes to the summit of unmitigated gall, look no further than Mitch McConnell. When it comes to wondering how the Supreme Court became undeniably corrupt and partisan, look no further than Mitch McConnell, the man who defied the Constitution and wrote his own rules when it comes to the judiciary. So when it comes to Republicans crying over keeping Trump judiciary appointments as low as possible, guess who is crying the loudest? Look no further than Mitch McConnell. I'm going to play video of McConnell expressing his shock and disappointment over the judiciary being politicized. But first, a quick review of McConnell absolutely politicizing the judiciary. President Barack Obama nominated a Supreme Court justice a year before the presidential election, but McConnell refused to hold confirmation hearings, huffing and puffing that the American people should decide at the ballot box. In refusing to hold the confirmation hearings, McConnell shredded the Constitution, which mandates the Senate confirm nominees. It was outrageous behavior that was absolutely partisan, as well as outright manipulating the judiciary. And it was not even remotely an isolated incident, because four years later, only one month from a presidential election, Trump nominated Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court, and Mitch McConnell rushed through her nomination, with confirmation occurring only one week before the election. The Grim Reaper, as he liked to call himself, was now smiling at his new nickname, the Master Manipulator. And now Mitch is stamping his little yurtle the turtle feet and threatening judges because karma is coming around and biting him in the ace. And what is causing ire for Mitch? Simple. Two federal district judges announced their retirements before the presidential election. But now that Trump has been elected, they canceled their retirements. And why wouldn't they? No conscientious judge wants to be replaced with another Eileen Cannon. But Mitch got very, very mad about it and took to the Senate floor. Watch this. Just before Thanksgiving, the Senate reached a deal on judicial nominees. Republicans would forego our available procedural roadblocks on the remaining nominations to district courts, which have the votes to be confirmed. In exchange, the Democratic leader wouldn't bring any of the remaining nominations to circuit courts to the floor because they don't have the votes to be confirmed. As a result, <coughs> President Biden is getting around a dozen more district judges, and the next president will get four more circuits to fill. At, at least, I expect he will. We've already seen two partisan Democrat district judges, quote, unretire, end quote, after the American people voted to fire Democrats last month. Okay, now as Yertle the Turtle rambles on here about his outrage, pay close attention to what he said about the so-called deal. McConnell is saying that he agreed not to harass the confirmation process, even though the Democrats have the votes. So now he has graciously agreed not to make every confirmation last longer than it has to if you give Trump four circuit court judges. First of all, what idiot agreed to that deal? I'm looking at you, Chuck Schumer. And second of all, whether judges change their minds about retiring is not the Senate's business. But of course, McConnell is going to make it his business using the lie that the American people fired the Democrats. Of course, treating hyperbole as fact is a favorite McConnell trick to justify unethical actions on the part of Republicans. Watch this. But now, in just a matter of weeks, Democrats have already met that all-time record. It's hard to conclude that this is anything other than open partisanship. They roll the dice, they're Democrat, would replace them, and now he won't. They're changing their plans to keep a Republican from doing it. It's a brazen 
admission, and the incoming administration would be wise to explore all available recusal options with these judges, because it's clear now that they have a political finger on the scale. This sort of partisan behavior undermines the integrity of the judiciary. So in other words, it's okay when we get partisan with the judiciary, but if you do something we don't like, we'll call it partisan and bring the weight of the government down on you. McConnell is actually threatening here, and the threats get even bigger. Watch him threaten two federal circuit court judges. But it would be essentially alarming if either of the two circuit judges whose announced retirements created these vacancies currently pending before the Senate in Tennessee and in North Carolina were actually to follow suit. Never, never before as a circuit judge unretired after the presidential election. It's literally unprecedented. If these circuit judges unretire because they don't like who won the election, I can only assume they will face significant ethics complaints based on canons two and five of the Code of Conduct of U.S. judges, followed by serial recusal demands from the Department of Justice. And they'll have earned it. Speaking of no precedent, there is simply no precedent for being this disingenuous and this hypocritical. Mitch McConnell is going to lecture people on breaking precedent? There is simply no precedent McConnell won't break to empower the right wing, especially the corporate right wing. McConnell may occasionally stand up to MAGA idiots trying to destroy American democracy, but make no mistake about it, he will always work ruthlessly to override democracy with corporatist conservative fascism. In the months and years ahead, we'll need to look for silver linings. Call it our silver linings playbook. Hey, that's good. I should trademark that. Well, Here's our silver lining. McConnell has a history of many strokes. If a big one incapacitates him, the governor who would find a replacement is a Democrat. I'm Anthony Vincent Gallo for Occupy Democrats.